The Tower of London is thought to have been an unescapable and impenetrable fortress. Since its creation following the Norman Conquest, it's been a prison to some of English history's most famous figures, such as queens, kings and high-ranking members of the government or the church. It's a site where horrific torture has taken place, and also where executions were carried out by the order of the monarchy. It's a site also where two of Henry VIII's queens, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, were executed during the Tudor era. These incidents all came later in the tower's lifespan, however today we're taking a journey right to the start of the Tower of London's creation, and to one of its first prisoners. Today we look at the incredible story of Ranulf Flambard, the Norman Bishop of Durham, who became the first man to escape the Tower of London. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ranulf Flambard was born around 1060, and he worked for Bishop Odo of Bayeux, the half-brother of William I, or William the Conqueror. He soon transferred to working for William, and entered the Chancery, the medieval writing office for England's new king. He stood out amongst the other clerks for his good looks, but also his intelligence, and his nickname Flambard was given to him meaning torchbearer or incendiary flame, showing his fiery and spirited demeanour. Ranulf gained a reputation as an able financier and administrator, and he helped to increase the royal revenue for the king, being key in the compilation of the Doomsday Book or survey in England. He is recorded in this as holding land in a number of different counties. Inside the king's court, he had a rather mixed reputation, with some higher class members resenting how Ranulf of low birth could order around nobles and those of a higher class than himself. He rose up throughout William the Conqueror's court and served as a keeper of the king's seal from around 1085. Once he was travelling down the River Thames though, in the Thames estuary, when he was set upon by pirates and seized. To prevent the seal falling into the wrong hands and the hands of villainous pirates, he threw the seal into the ocean. When William died and his lands were split between his oldest son Robert Curthouse, who gained Normandy, and his third son William Rufus, who was given England, Ranulf chose to serve Rufus, remaining in England. Throughout the reign of Rufus, Ranulf served him well as an administrator, financial advisor, and supervisor to many construction projects. He personally managed to obtain 16 abbeys, and eventually gained the wealthy see of Durham for himself, being consecrated on the 5th of June, 1099. Some historians claim that he in fact bribed the king, with a significant amount of cash to make him this position. Ranulf would become the Bishop of Durham, and whilst the king would be away fighting in Normandy, he would effectively run the country and the English government. In terms of construction projects, he would oversee the construction of the first stone bridge in London, and he also built a wall around the White Tower and the Tower of London, enclosing the inner wall. After the death of William Rufus and the succession of Henry I, Ranulf Flambard's reputation would take a steep and sharp decline. The new king would immediately throw Ranulf into the Tower of London on the 15th of August 1100 for embezzlement. Flambard would be thrown into the very tower and prison that he had helped to make so unescapable with the building of the walls enclosing the White Tower. The Tower of London at this time looked very different, with it only really containing its famous White Tower. Ranulf, however, would use immense cunning and genius to mastermind his escape from the Tower of London with the help of his friends. On the 3rd of February 1101, Flambard would not only become one of the prison's first inmates, but would become the first prisoner to ever escape the Tower. The popular legend states that the bishop was seen descending from the windows of his cell by a rope, so he effectively climbed out of the tower by using a rope, however he managed to get this smuggled in for him. His friends had managed to get this rope into his cell, hidden inside a flagon of wine. Ranulf then gave this wine to his guards who were watching him, and they subsequently got very drunk and eventually fell asleep. Whilst his captives were sound asleep, he then managed to climb down the rope to escape his cell. His friends had also arranged transport to take him away from the area, and a ship arrived to whisk him away. On board the ship was some of the bishop's treasures and his elderly mother, and the vessel crossed the English Channel bound for Normandy. King Henry I had confiscated all of Ranulf's lands, and he must have been enraged when he heard of the escape. Once he arrived in Normandy, Ranulf entered the service of Robert Curthouse, the rival of Henry I, and he would convince him to make a play for the English throne and attempt to depose Henry I. Ranulf's arrival was a catalyst for the invasion of England, and he was tasked with securing the defection of some of Henry I's ships to the side of the Norman invaders. Robert Curthouse invaded in July 1101 with Ranulf Flambard, but ultimately he renounced his claim to the throne, 
signing the Treaty of Alton. This agreement stated that Robert would recognise Henry as the King of England, in order for Henry paying a large amount of money to Robert, and him conceding territory in Normandy. Henry would later basically rip up the agreement invading Normandy himself, but the agreement did pardon Ranulf Flambard. Ranulf Flambard would live out the last of his days in peace, devoting his time to the church. He would be a rather scheming figure in the medieval period, however ultimately he became one of the first men to be imprisoned inside the brutal and notorious Tower of London. But more importantly, he would be the first person to ever escape one of history's most notorious castles and prisons. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.